Welcome to Thursday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us again today. And again, we're in our fifth week of our Access Road we call Grace and Peace. We're learning from the Word of God, from the teachings of the Master, how to live a life of rest and peace. I can tell you this will have just tremendous benefits in our life in all areas, in every facet of your life, when you begin to walk and learn to live a life of rest and peace. Well, yesterday I kind of had to cut it off for uh, time's sake, but I want to go back over to John chapter 14 once again, John chapter 14. And as you recall yesterday, we said that this was words spoken by Jesus, things that he said to his disciples and to all of us, that were pertaining to the new covenant. In fact, in context there, he had just instituted what we call the Lord's Supper. Now, what is the Lord's Supper? What's the significance of that? Well, that that was the institution or origination point of the new covenant that we are under today, the new and better covenant established on better promises. And of course, the new covenant was established because Jesus fulfilled all the old covenant of law. He didn't just sweep it under the rug and say, just forget that. He fulfilled it, every bit of it, and then established and replaced it with a new and better covenant that we're under today. And of course, that's what he said when he instituted the Lord's Supper. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood. So things that he's saying and teaching his disciples and all of us right here are getting us ready, preparing them and us to live this new and living way this in this new covenant that we have with God. And of course, this is a covenant of peace. According to Isaiah 54, 9 and 10, this is a covenant of peace. And God wants to teach us the ways of peace and rest so that we benefit and we live this life right here. And again, it has tremendous benefits for all of us once we begin to live this kind of life right here. But John chapter 14, verse number 27 Jesus is talking. He says, peace, I leave with you. Now, he's not just talking about any, anybody's peace here or any kind of peace. Notice right here, he says, my peace, I give to you. My peace, I give to you. The kind of peace that Jesus lived and walked in on the earth is the kind of peace that he left to all of us as part of our inheritance in this new covenant. Now, he makes a distinguishing Uh, statement here. He says, not as the world gives, do I give to you. So in other words, he's distinguishing between his peace and that pseudo non-peace that the world offers. See, the the world's offering or idea of peace is absence of conflict, war, negative circumstances, conditions, pressures, that kind of stuff. I mean, if you know, you're not going to go too many days without without having some of that, if not all of it, it, it you know, barrage, you know, barraging your head and in your life. You, you know, we're, we're surrounded by by 24 hour a day news now, news broadcast, and I can tell you, most of it, the vast majority, is bad news. It's telling you all the bad stuff that's happening. It will rob you of peace and it'll trouble your heart. It's not going to minister peace to you. So if you're looking for peace by trying to find something, some kind of good news on from the world, you're just not going to find it. The world's peace is fleeting, fragile, temporary, because it's all based on external stuff. But Jesus' peace is eternal, is unchangeable. In fact, the peace that Jesus leaves with us will change uh, things externally. It will change mindsets. It, it will change your mindset. It will change your demeanor. It will change your perspective and attitude. And it will eventually get in and change circumstances and situations in our life. And it will cause those things to be at peace as well. We're going to get into those and see examples of that in the Word of God and how Jesus operated in that kind of peace right there. So thank God he didn't just say, well, you know, make it the best way you can here. You know, go get peace from the world. No, he says, I'm going to give you mine. I'm going to give you the kind of peace that I've been walking in, that you've been seeing me walk in. And see, you you have to look at the life of Jesus and you you look closely at his life here on the earth and you see that he was he didn't live life in turmoil all the time he wasn't torn up he wasn't in stress and strife all the time 
No, he learned to live a life of rest and peace. Now, how did he do that? Something we pointed out earlier is because he learned how to roll his cares over, over on his father. He learned how to put the burden over on God, and God can do something about those things. See, your worrying is not ever going to change anything. You're carrying around burdens, either for yourself or somebody else, is not going to change anything. In fact, it will drag you down. It will weight you down. It'll cause your heart to be so clogged up that God can't get anything to you or through you because it's got so much baggage in it. So we want to live a life like Jesus. And a lot of people think, well, Jesus was kind of class by himself. What he was, as far as being the son of God, the master, the head of the church, we could go on down the list there, you know, the Alpha and the Omega, he is in a class by himself in that regard. But he's he did not live a life down here on the earth where it was just untouchable, where we could not live that kind of life. Now, one of the, the reasons Jesus came to the earth, not the only, but one reason is to give us and show us an example of how all of us should be and can live in this new covenant, that we can live a life of peace. We can live this life of rest. In fact, we've already read it earlier, Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30, Jesus is beckoning us and inviting us to come to him, learn from him, take his yoke, which is easy, his burden is light, and learn from him the ways of rest. The, the message translation says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Boy, I love that right there. See, this is what Jesus wants us to have. He wants us to receive his peace and learn to walk in the ways, the mindsets, and the uh, ways of peace and rest in our life. Now, again, notice down here, it goes on to say, Jesus is saying in context of this, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now see, that's our responsibility. When he says let, the understood subject right there is you. In other words, God's not going to do this for you. This is your responsibility. See, God's not going to override your will and your heart and just make you do something. Just make you know, your heart be free of trouble and be at rest and peace. You have to learn by an act of your will how to do this. You have to choose the ways. Choose, make decisions of peace and rest. Make decisions that not every uh, thought that comes into my mind is worth keeping and allowing to go down in my heart where I entertain those thoughts, those negative thoughts that are going to trouble it. No, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. This is the way we're going to learn to walk in peace and rest is not letting our heart be troubled and neither letting it be afraid. Now, I know as far as natural things, there's a lot of reasons for fear, being afraid externally. You know, we kind of grow up being taught that. And you know, I've even heard some Christians say, well, a little fear is good for all of us. No, it's not. Uh, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to have thoughts of fear coming into your head. You're not going to have thoughts that would try to trouble you come into your head. But you have a decision to make right there where you're going to allow those to stay and build a nest in your heart or, and, to, and gain root and germinate in your heart. Or you're going to go in and just take those and toss them over on the Lord, get rid of them right there. If it's a thought that robs you of peace, that brings trouble to your mind, and brings fear, makes you afraid, then at that point, you have to reject those thoughts. They are not from God. Now notice, Jesus is not telling us to resist something from God. He's telling us to resist something from the adversary, from the enemy. See, the enemy's trying to get access to your heart. That, that's the way he controls your life. That's the way he gets bad things into your life, is by getting access to your heart. And see, if you're letting your heart be troubled and letting your heart be afraid, you've allowed the enemy to have access to your innermost being. You've had allowed him to gain entrance into your heart. And don't think for one minute, you know, that he's just, you know, that he's bringing good things with him. No, he's bringing a lot of evil stuff with him. He wants to get you all in distress and worry and burden down. He wants you to lose sleep. 
He wants you to get in stress. He wants you to be in strife with everybody else, short with everybody. The way he does that by, is by getting access to your heart. Jesus saying you have a responsibility of what, of what you let in your heart. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let fear get inside of your heart. It may come into your head, but don't let it drop down in your heart. Don't entertain it. Don't let it stay there. Don't let it germinate and, and uh, build a nest in your heart and stay there. Now, let's look over to uh, the Old Testament to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. And uh, we're going to be in this probably into next week. So uh, make sure you don't miss any of these podcasts. If you're, if you're wanting to learn this, and this is worth learning, I can tell you right now, this is something I've been on for a while. And this is something, even though you think you might have a handle on it, you just let it go for a while. You just let your mind drift and, and you lift your heart unguarded and pretty soon you got all kinds of troubles, worries, and fears down in there just, just producing chaos in your life and in your heart. And see, so we have to constantly guard and keep it. Now notice here in, in uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, he says, keep your heart or guard your heart. That word keep can also be translated guard. He said, keep or guard your heart with all diligence. Now why is that? Because the enemy is constantly trying to bring negative, troubling thoughts, thoughts of worry, thoughts of anxiety, thoughts of stress, thoughts of fear into your heart he's trying to get access into your heart so he says keep or guard your heart with all diligence in other words you can't allow you can't you can't take a vacation here you might go on vacation but you can't take a vacation from this because the enemy is diligent if there's one thing we can say he's diligent He'll keep after it. He'll, you know, he may fail one time. He's going to be back. He's going to try it again. He's going to try to get that thought into your heart. He's trying to get access. He says, for out of it spring the issues of life. Out of what? Out of your heart spring or flow the issues of life. And we could talk about this a long time right here, but I want you to see that he's saying the same thing here in Proverbs as what Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He's saying, keep your heart, guard it with all diligence. Why? From keeping troubling thoughts, allowing the enemy to have access with his thoughts, with his ways into your heart. And see, again, that's our responsibility. You know, God's not going to do that for you. Your pastor's not going to do that for you. Other Christians are not going to do that for you. All the as good as all the prayer hotlines are, that those are all good. But listen, if you never, if if you are allowing your heart to be troubled, the enemy is going to have access to your heart. And if he has access to your heart, he has access to your life. I want to say that one more time. If the enemy has access to your heart, he has access to your life. What he gets into your heart, he's going to bring to pass eventually in your life. And that's what it's saying right there. Guard your heart with all diligence. Let it not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. For out of it, out of the heart, flow or spring the issues of life. Now, how do we do that? How do we guard or keep our heart with all diligence? Well, again, this is written in context. So let's just go back to verse number 20 and read from there. Verse 20 says, My son, give attention to my words. God is speaking to us. He says, give attention to God's words. See, God's words are not going to trouble you. God's words are not going to bring fear into your life. If we're attending to God's words, we're not going to allow the enemy's words of trouble and fear and anxiety and stress to get entrance into our heart. He said, give attention to my words incline your ear to my sayings. Now, he's not just talking about these ears, even though I pointed here. That's where it starts. He's not just talking about these ears. Jesus said this one time. He says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Everybody who is listening to Jesus said they had these ears, but not everybody had ears in their heart open to what Jesus was saying. See, again, this is one way we just guard our heart is we learn to respond and listen and incline our ear to the words of God. We allow the words of God to be on the, uh, to be on the throne of our heart. 
If they're on the throne of our heart, other words are just not going to be able to get entrance there. See, the enemy's words are completely opposed and completely contrary to God's words. So if we're attending to God's words, if we're inclining our ear to his sayings, we're not going to incline our ears, the ears of our heart, to what the enemy's trying to bring into our life. Verse 21, it says, Do not let them, the words, the words of God, depart from your eyes. And again, he's not just talking about these eyes. He's talking about the eyes of your heart. You have eyes in your heart. In other words, don't let the image of God's words that's produced in your heart, don't let that depart. Don't allow another image to get down on the inside of you, a vision of defeat, a vision of going down, a, a, a vision of destruction. See, that's the way the enemy tries to get into your life. And he goes on to say, keep them, keep those words in the midst of your heart. Keep the words of God in the midst of your heart. If you're keeping the words of God in the midst of your heart, then that is guarding your heart. That puts a guard around your heart that keeps those troubling, worrisome, stress-filled, fearful thoughts out of your heart. Verse 22, for they are life to those that find them and help to all their flesh. There's something I've got to get to later on with that in, a, in future lessons, but that's very important. But this is how you guard your heart. You begin to attend to the word, incline your ear to what God said. Incline your ear to the teachings of Jesus and not what the enemy is trying to bring into your life. Guard your heart from troublesome thoughts and you will guard your life from trouble. I can tell you. Big, big thing right there. Well, that's all the time I've got for today. Join us again tomorrow as we pick up from here and finish this week out. If you'd like additional materials, go to TonyCowan.org and we will see you tomorrow.